Hello and good evening. Welcome to the Business of Property. I am your host, Cheryl Leong, uh, Property Development Australia. How are we doing, Australia, and everyone that's here today? Uh, those of you in lockdown, I don't know how many weeks we've been here, but you know, I think I'm starting to get used to living in my Ugg boots. Um, and I'm really, really tempted to turn up next week in my Udi as well. So um, thanks for being here today. Our special guest is Chris Smith, um, who's the founder of Renault Sketch. And he has over 20 years of experience in the design industry working for major architectural firms. And why we've invited um, Chris today is to help us look at a very helpful tool that you can use to model and problem solve your projects and it's called SketchUp. Um, and I'll invite Chris down to the virtual floor um, to join me. Hi, good evening, Chris. How are you doing? Hi, Cheryl. Yeah, really good. How are you? Fantastic. I am doing very, very well. Thank you. It's good to be here. Good to be safe. And well, um, we have an audience here uh, with us on Facebook land and LinkedIn land. So we're very keen. I mean, Chris, I want to, um, I understand that you've got um, this background in, in design and architectural. Um, tell us a little bit about what, what SketchUp is and how it can be used and why you have become sort of so engrossed and specialized in it. Yes, certainly. Thanks, Cheryl, for having me here tonight. Uh, for me, a little bit about myself and to answer your question um, as to why I've kind of got right into SketchUp. Uh, yes, I've worked for many uh, architectural firms, both Melbourne and Sydney, uh, as an interior designer for the last t just over 20 years. And the program that I have used throughout my career, um, I've used quite a few, but one, one of them being SketchUp. And the thing I love about SketchUp is that it's very intuitive to use. It's very easy mm -hmm. to use. And also you can be as um, uh, detailed as you want with SketchUp or you can be quite um, very fluid, easy, um, conceptual work with SketchUp. So you don't have to be as detailed um, in the beginning, but you can get as detailed as you like. So um, the reason why I, I love that as to some other programs that I use or have used in the past uh, is that sometimes you have to be quite um, precise straight away. So you, you don't have that freedom of being able to create uh, concept work um, as easily using those programs. Uh, and my, my background in interior design has been a lot of uh, commercial um, projects, uh, commercial hospitality, uh, and in the later part of my career has been yeah, more in the residential. So that also in the commercial residential, um, doing, doing, working for some larger property developer companies, um, doing some high rises. Uh, at their company I used to work for. And with Reno Sketch, uh, which is very new, so it's it started this year, uh, we do uh, residential, we do kind of medium level, we don't do high end, um, kind of do mid level um, interior spaces. And we I use SketchUp to create um, for clients a whole lot of um, visual imagery um, using SketchUp as well as the 2D plans and drafting of work as well. So SketchUp has that ability to do both. Um, so I hope that maybe answers your, your question yeah. there. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, we, we want to be able to see um, SketchUp in in the flesh and and in use. So I know that you've got a little bit of a presentation ready ready for us. Why don't we dive into um, telling us a little bit about it and how we can use it? I mean, we've got a lot of property developers, mm. investors, renovators in the community. Uh, and often I think we sort of think that if we want any plans done, we need to have a professional or draft person or an architect um, uh, help us create that. Where does SketchUp come into this? So, yeah, 
Great question. So SketchUp basically, um, because it is quite intuitive and you can uh, easily kind of get a hang of doing SketchUp yourself uh, to do some kind of loose uh, 3D work. So you can create facade options that you may be thinking about doing. I love, I love it because it's a great tool to uh, look at your site in 3D and get an understanding of the site constraints, the council uh, control guidelines, um, boundary setbacks and stuff. You can see it in 3D. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of my clients have trouble visualising this information. Um, so if I can present it to them in 3D and they can see an image of that um, or even an animation of, of their site, uh, just puts that into perspective. And then you can look at SketchUp, using SketchUp to look at carving up um, 3D mass. So what is possible, mm -hmm. how to get that ratio of, of floor area um, options to the site area that you need to satisfy for council, things like that. So um, uh, that's, that's the kind of thing I can show you tonight as well. I've got a little presentation and we can also, um, if you like, if we have time, I can jump into the actual program to show you a little bit of how, how intuitively easy it is to use. So for further, yeah. um, for you guys with your developments um, or joint ventures and you've got stakeholders or people um, who you need to communicate information to, mm. it's a great tool to be able to do that in a 3D way with images. Yeah, before I guess you even get sort of your architecturals and your drafts, it's sort of these are these are the sort of ideas that we're um, we're envisaging. Um, okay, so it'll exactly, be, yeah. And so I mean, I know you mentioned intuitive. I'm really you know really keen to see when you're talking about intuitive. It's iPhone intuitive, it's Samsung intuitive, like um, what intuitive that means. And I'm sure we'll have a look. Um, yeah. And what sort of knowledge people need to have at least have before they use it well? Yeah, I think if people uh, have a little bit of understanding of some some programs, they'll probably, you know, pick it up really quickly as opposed to if you, if you don't have any other program experience. So if you're using things like PowerPoint or um, uh, Adobe um, Illustrator, um, Photoshop a little bit like that. You can even get those programs like versions on your phone, your iPhone. Mm. Um, so if you're kind of using PowerPoint or things like that, you could, we probably pick this up um, pretty quickly. So it's very easy to use. Um, I also uh, teach how to use SketchUp as a bit of a, a side gig. So I do that for a, a lovely um, lady by the name of Belinda Smith uh, for her her clients who are renovators who want to use SketchUp for, and SketchUp can be used for so many things, um, which I'll show you. So um, I teach it as well. And um, I, I find, you know, the students seem to get a grasp of how to use this um, pretty easy. So um, if you want, I can maybe start by going through Let's the presentation. Let's jump into it. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just share screen. And whilst you're well, doing that, anyone that's um, uh, our audience today, you have any questions or if you've used SketchUp yourself, you know, I'd love to hear what your experience has been, how is it, it, it how you've used it, um, whether it's to present um, some concept ideas, whether you've used it for sort of interior design. Um, I'd love for you to share again, share your, your experiences and ask any questions of Chris as well. So over to you. Great. All right, so so I can actually see that. Can everyone see the um, presentation here? Yes, the one with it's got yes. five dot points. Yes, great, okay, excellent. Perfect. So I'll just run through these points and then I'll elaborate upon them as we go. So yeah, it can produce three D visual images, um, and these can be used to accompany your feasibility studies. Uh, and uh, as well as being able to communicate with um, stakeholders. So when it comes to council, you know, setbacks, you know, you don't try and visualise them. You can actually model them up in 3D and look at different possible uh, development options within that site using mass. So I, I'm going to show you a little bit later. Um, well, after this, I'm going to show a little video that kind of 
shows you highlights of SketchUp, what it can do. Uh, so create multiple 3D facade design options. I've got a, uh, a, two, a client's project where I'll show you some facade design options I've done with different colorways. And mm. um, you can also do a little bit of your own value engineering. So with SketchUp, you can quantify um, areas, floor areas, wall areas, and volumes. So then you can apply that for calculating um, floor finishes, costings, and all that kind of thing. And when it does come to, you know, um, briefing an architect, you can hand them the 3D model. They can then run with that, and it makes it so much easier to brief them exactly mm. what you want. Um, or when engaging a, a draftsman, um, uh, these days it's called a, a building designer, um, you can be able to, you know, brief them really, really well, um, hand over the model. And like I said, you can have that 3D model as detailed um, or as basic as, as you want, and then they can run with it. Um, all right, so I'll just go to the next slide. This is a, a video. I'll just start that up. This is kind of going to give you a hint of what you can do. So SketchUp was made by Google. Um, you can basically position your site, um, your model on the site. This is in Barara Heights. Um, and you can then extract the location, the uh, terrain from that location in 3D. So if you've got a sloping site, you can, it will extract that geometry. Um, you can then do shadow studies because your model will be geolocated um, exactly um, if you get, punch in an address, it will geolocate it exactly where the address is so you can cast accurate shadow studies. Um, and like I was saying, you can get the terrain from, um, so it works with Google Earth and extracts that information, which is a great feature. So mm. now it's about to show you an example of uh, zooming in to an area in Sydney. So this is Barawa Heights. This is a project that I did for a client. Um, and you, so basically you select a region and once you're happy with the region, it will then extract it and plonk it into your SketchUp program. So you import that, brings that in, gives you the longitude and latitude of, of that actual street address. Um, and then you can do different kind of things with that. You can add the existing um, site conditions to do an analysis of that site. So this is just a very basic box indicating that existing site that was on the house that was on the site. There you can see the, the geolocated terrain. And then here we're kind of looking at identifying the site boundaries, which are in the hot pink and the green area, which is, I guess, buildable space on that site. You can look at height restrictions and council planning controls. So it's kind of spinning around the, the site at so moment. The, just just yeah. with that, Chris, sorry to interrupt. Mm. In terms of setbacks and height controls, so how do you put that in or, or does the SketchUp have the ability to, to extract that information? Uh, so, yeah, you have to put that in. So with the um, once you've got the site conditions, um, and, and again, being that you can be as detailed or, or as um, plain Jane as you like, SketchUp also it now is uh, works with Trimble. So you could also plug in um, 3D point cloud surveys um, of sites. I mean, you can do all kinds of things. Um, but the great thing about using the Google um, Earth to get your extraction of the terrain is that you can then can get an outline of the of the the site, and then from there draw in the setbacks yourself. So that's what I've done for this e example. Mm. Uh, just move that I around. like that you can so, you can sort of see sort of if you need to do some excavation or sort of underground parking that sort of thing. You can visually yes. see that at this point. So, so th this here you can kind of see this lower part here is is the excavation limit was one meter on this site. Um, you then had a, 
a floor, um, first floor height restriction of 1.5 metres and then a height overall height of 8 metre restriction. So for the client, so this was a couple, this client, um, uh, the, the wife um, had a lot of trouble trying to envisage what they were wanting to talk about to do. So um, I did this exercise for them and then was able to look at the ratio of, you know, um, that the 430 metres square was the maximum floor mm. area that the council would allow. It's about a 962 metre square lot size. So from, from doing this, you can look, you can calculate, you know, the site area if you haven't got that information, um, if you haven't got a surveyor on board at this, at this stage. So it's kind of really early stages. Um, and I'll just kind of run through that there to the end of the video. And... Yeah, it's a very handy tool for designing new builds as well as renovations. So I'll, I'll just pop on to the next slide. Um, so yeah, with this kind of this kind of work can help you with your feasibility studies. Um, you can do then different considerate different kind of um, configurations of uh, volumes of mass, um, and then that can also aid with decision making process with your uh, stakeholders. So um, everybody can talk to the model, they can talk to the screen, you can export um, images to email or PDF and so on. So again, like, yeah, it just, it just helps you visualize. You don't have to visualize, you can see it on the screen. Mm -hmm. um, and ex like I said, you can export images and animations, which is what we just saw. Um, it's great at doing little animations where you get a whole 360 degree view of, of your proposal. And um, and that way, you know, if everyone's on the same page, um, you can have, make educated decisions that you need to. Mm. So I've got a bit of an example here, uh, that same example. So here um, you've got your boundary setbacks in the hot pink. You've got your height restrictions in the pale pink. Um, and then buildable error, proposed building mass volume. Uh, and then that's kind of the same information that I was talking about. I've kind of got ahead of myself there. But it's a great tool. So you can then, you know, email this to, to builders. You can email it to your private certifier um, and you can build upon this. This is just a, an example. So as well as doing um, site studies and things like that, you can also do uh, your whole house proposal, the design, how you want it to look, um, what material finishes you're going to use, which is great for, you know, showing to your JV partners, mm. um, get them on board with the, the, the kind of um, style that you think would appeal to the demographics that the project is, is working towards. Um, uh, and you can also have a, a great tool to brief your builders, building designers, as, as mentioned previously. Um, so when you'd be able to talk to a 3D model, and I'll just kind of go to the next slide. So here we've got an example for a client. Um, and you may know this client. It's it's Belinda Smith of mm -hmm. Renovate and Real Estate. It's, this is her project. I noticed her arches. You know, there we go. Um, those infamous arches. Um, so again, so this is uh, able to communicate, you know, different kind of uh, finish options um, for for Belinda. Not that she needs that much help in visualizing finishes, um, but there's other people involved in that project as well. So her husband and so on. So here we've got, you know, a, a light finish option. Um, original building is brick, so it's rendered. So we've got a white um, paint render finish, white window frames, um, and then we've got a sandstone detail finish. Um, also, we've got a bit of use of breeze block, and here we've got some some planting to see what that would look like. And the other option, you can see what it would look like without that planting option. Mm. You can go with a darker scheme, with a darker roof. Um, we've got black window frames and black balustrading got the same sandstone but just to see how that would look so you can imagine you know it's very quick and easy with a paintbrush tool to do this um, the other thing about SketchUp is that you can import material finishes that you've downloaded so 
if you've got specific finishes mm-hmm. from a certain mm-hmm. supplier, you can download the image from their website, plug that in, paint, use the paintbrush tool and paint that finish uh, onto your model. So it's a great tool that way. Um, so as well as all that 3D stuff, you can then um, extract section cuts which create your 2D plans uh, from your model. So that helps to, again, visually communicate um, the plans to your partners and map out exactly what is going where, how that room's uh, adjacency relationships work, the circulation flow um, of your kitchens, how are they working and so on. And you can then also use it to add up, um, as I mentioned, floor areas, wall areas, which is you know incredibly useful for um, looking at cost of materials and quantifying that kind of information. So it's a, it's a really valuable resource. So if you've yeah. got someone um, in your business that can use this program and it's very easy to start using, um, then that becomes, you're almost getting back claiming that kind of information and work in-house. Um, so maybe, you know, you've got some mum and dad um, renovators or you've got small business um, developer owners and maybe it's a, in the family, you can have um, someone in the family who learns mm. this program um, and then you kind of claim back that, that information. You don't have to outsource that information. I have a bit of a giggle because I can see my family out with the ruler and the pencil <laughs> and the and we're trying to figure out measuring trying the to kitchen. Figure out. Go, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I look at it now and because we're doing this for, for our backyard and, you know, sort of trying to mm. visualise where the, the pool and the landscaping is going to be, I'm like... <laughs> I look at this. I'm like, this I is just perfect do that. for you, this Cheryl. Is, this is perfect. Yeah. There we go. My husband, if you're listening, this is this is what we need to do. Not not try to look through the piece of paper and make sure that we're yes. sketched out. <laughs> this is this is exactly um, the most of my clients um, uh, have this this uh, problem where they're trying to figure the scale of what they want to do. Uh, and this um, program enables you to see the scale um, that you, you can both, without trying to visualise what's in your partner or your joint venture's head, you both mm. can see it right in front of you. There's no guessing. Yep. It takes all that yep. guesswork out. So, yeah, um, yeah he, he, this is an example of SketchUp. When you get SketchUp, um, there's a free version you can use um, which comes with SketchUp Layout as well as the paid version, which is SketchUp Pro, um, comes with SketchUp Layout. So you can use Layout to do quite professional-looking drawings, such as this with your title blocks and so on. Um, And then they've got tables that you can use. You can have your table information in in Excel, and then that can be plugged into SketchUp. So you update your information in Excel, and then that updates directly into SketchUp as well. Uh, So here you can see, you know, Council planning control maximum area was 430 meters squared. And for these guys, we came in at 323 meters squared. Um, so we're well within that um, planning control. Mm. Um, the another amazing thing I mentioned earlier is to create shadow um, studies. So once the model is geolocated, uh, you can create, uh, we can turn on the shadow sun setting function and uh, place it at any time of day, at any month of the year. Um, and that once it's geolocated, does it for um, uh, Sydney, Australia, or wherever that project is. Um, if, if you don't geolocate it, the setting is set to, I think it's Canadian, um, not sure why. Maybe SketchUp is originally, I don't know, is Google in Canada? I don't know. Wherever Google is or whatever, for whatever reason, the, the default is Canadian. Um, this is really, really, really great tool. So um, it helps you, the client or, or yourself, uh, whoever is the audience, understand what kind of shading structure they may need for their site. So I've got a little video example here. Uh, client project. This is a proposal I did. There's uh, summer, uh, 
February sunrise to sunset. So the dark building is the proposed extension. The white building is the existing building. So we're looking at mm. shading structures and to try and tackle this west-facing part of the rear of the house and what to do. And then this is in July, so winter, sunrise to sunset. Um, so looking at it, it, how that performs, it, it, it lets in a little bit of the late afternoon sunlight into the house. So for this client, um, we ended up having to do quite a bit more of extension out the back here to provide extra shading structure um, than what they anticipated. Um, without that tool, they may have only realised that very late in the game during construction. So you can see how having that data and info mm. analysed at, at a planning design stage can help you save or, or or maybe actually in this case they spent more money. But <laughs> the end result was that they're not having the sun, um, they're having adequate shading yes. in the design. Yeah. It's not the sun is not going to stream through the windows and all that kind of thing. Yeah, so, and, and I then think have most, to. Mm, sorry, yeah, I was sorry, say, is, um, like because often we get drawings and it's sort of a static image of the the shadow diagram, and you you can't really see. I love that visual actual movement of the sun, and you can actually see. Oh, right, it's passing over, and where where this where the shade is. And, and often yes. when we're when we're purchasing properties, and I remember this when we we were building our house, and and the back of our house faces west, and the western sun oh, is. Yeah horrendously strong yes in in summer but we learnt that that we needed to have less glass there and yep. more walls whereas I could see across our neighbors like some of them because they would not have been able to visualize that full glass and the mm. and so something like this would be so helpful to have to be able to say hey you know you might want to think of some sort of awning or, or and this is why. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like the the clients um, purchased this house a year ago or, as you know, two, two years ago now because time is just just all going by so quickly in lockdown. Um, <laughs> so they lived there for about a year and um, it, it was a massive problem. Uh, so they'd done, they'd been through a summer this this existing house here that was all there was like a sunroom here mm. and it was just incredibly hot in summer so so they they definitely wanted to have some kind of structure here but the 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 size and extent and what it was going to be was just all a big question mark so this really helped them nut nut out how how much they needed and what yep. kind of shading structure it was going to be yeah, um, that's great. All right, so I might just pop off now to the program. I'm already signing up, Chris. I'm like, you are, I, it, I awesome. can see, I can see my backyard <laughs> renovation coming together. <laughs> it's, it's not going to require it's, me with a rib, a rubber, and a ruler. <laughs> oh, I, I, I um, there, there, maybe here's a bit of a disclaimer. You can go down a bit of a rabbit hole. Um, once you, you're doing um, everything in 3D uh, yes. because you, the, the possibilities become endless. Mm. Um, I think if you do it for a client, it's not a problem. If it's your own <laughs> property, <laughs> and it, and it, you can just do anything. At the moment, um, people are in lockdown. So, you know, I think if they need to fill up their time with practicing their SketchUp skills might not be a too bad a thing. Absolutely, absolutely. It's very good for this time of um, or right now. Um, so yeah, this is my, this is just kind of this is um, this is Belinda's house, and we're kind of at the at the stage of getting into the interiors here. So um, I'll just show you before I move away from the plan into three D. I will just show you. So down here we've got a, 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 a the makings of the kitchen. Well, it's really great is that you've got a bit of a, a layer system so you can turn your different kitchen options on and off. So we've got kitchen mm. option two on at the moment, which is an island. Um, you can turn that off. You can turn kitchen option one on uh, and it's just got a peninsula bench. 
um, and, I'll sh- and we'll sh- show you that in 3D as well. So that that kind of function is is fantastic. So you can do that for you know bathrooms and whatnot. I'll just take you now to um, a 3D view of the front that we saw before. So, Chris, when you're starting a design like this, do you start in 2D and then 3D? Because I'm trying to figure out how you work out. Like, I I see everything from an eagle eye point of view and the layout. Like, then, you know, how do I then go from that to to that? To 3D. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, uh, in the SketchUp course I teach, um, I, I, I'm not a very methodical person, so this course is methodical and I teach people how to um, crawl before they walk and walk before they run and run before they um, fly. So, yeah. um, but once you've got that um, knowledge, you can then, um, which I said to a student, um, who's out of the six modules, she's doing module four, and the and and through the course you learn how to build a, a two story house. And her, her main reason for for getting SketchUp is she's going to do her brother's um, house, um, so she wants to design it in in SketchUp. And I said, I said to her, you, you, you're at the point now where you can start doing that and you can start doing it in 3D. You don't have to do it in 2D. Um, I think the only reason why now in SketchUp you would do in 2D is um, to explain with drawings uh, a scope of work. So you've got existing, you've then got a demolition scope, and mm. then you've got a proposed scope, and that traditionally is done in, in 2D plans. Um, however, I do all my models in 3D, and then what I do is I simply cut the section planes to cut mm. the, for the plan view okay, to yep. get the 2D. So it's almost in reverse yes. using SketchUp. You're doing 3D and then your 2D secondary. So yep, just sense. orbiting around now, you can see... Um, by using the mouse, it's very powerful and that you can shift and pan just using um, the mouse and a shift We key. all know where we're going for a party after lockdown is over. <laughs> Linda, <laughs> check out your <laughs> outdoor <laughs> fresco. I, I believe she is here tonight. So <laughs> I'm sure she <laughs> and is. And she's seen most of this, so that's all good. <laughs> um, party at the yeah, Linda's so- house. Your oh, place, Belinda's absolutely. Place. Um, so this is actually, Belinda's actually turning this house into two townhouses. So um, this is, is unit one, uh, unit two rather, uh, and there's the entry here. Um, oh, and then there's unit one, which is the main entry here with the garage here and then the garage to unit two is uh, around the back there we saw mm-hmm. and um, I've got a bit of a uh, unit one's got a bit of an outdoor area in the front here so it, the, the ability to be able to orbit around this in 3d is just you know um, priceless and then you can zoom in and you know, zoom through a oh, window wow. so here's that here's that kitchen in 3d um, that's option one, and then we can go back and turn on uh, or turn off that option. Oh, sorry, that's option two with the island, or whatever. And option one is the peninsula island. So you can kind mm-hmm. of get a really mm-hmm. good idea. You know, you can, there's different kind of views you can, um, do what's a, a, a walking, so you can, you can do what walking around. It, it'll then kind of bump into things and you kind of steer it around. And then you've got look around. So look around's a little bit different to just the panning and orbiting. It actually will, you can then look up yep. at the extent of the room, get a really good idea of the room and the scale of things. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's such a great tool that is very intuitive and easy to, to learn. So um, I might just do a little bit of demo of that now. Yeah, that um, would be great. And can you layer yeah. on colours and and textures yes. as well? Yes. 
Yes, so that'll be our, our next um, part for this project. So we'll be, I'll just open up my paint bucket tool. Here we've got our colors. So I've got colors in my model. Uh, and I'll just show you, um, the, this is the sandstone that I've mm -hmm. grabbed from a supplier. There was also some timber that I've grabbed from a supplier. But in here is a, is a library from SketchUp. Uh, you've got everything from asphalt, concrete, brick, carpets, fabrics, you, you, you name it, that goes into anything, it's it's here. Um, um, however, I like to use the, the actual material finishes that we're proposing. So, mm -hmm. um, and also to, you know, you, you can go to the actual detail length of um, once you've applied a, a, a finish, say, say where, oh, I don't know what I've done there. I've added something. <laughs> I've added a horrible uh, baby poo brown colour. Let's not do that. <laughs> um, let's add some, um, some very pale timber here. So I'll just go and add that into perhaps, say, on this bench top. Just go inside this, this grouping. Actually, I'm not quite sure where I've, I've gone a little bit far in. So I'll just paint that on the top there. Mm -hmm. And I'll just turn the shadow settings off. The shadows, they, they take up a lot of memory. So, mm -hmm. so here you go. We've got. I've got a pale timber. We're in the ceiling there. What a lovely pale timber. I think it's almost like a bamboo. So that's kind of, you can see the bench top there. You can go to the nth degree of um, actually using the texture, the texture. you can position. Yeah. So, that, so you can see how quite small Ooh. scale that is. You can actually bring that up so you can see the grain make it oh cool. there you go yep so that's really useful if you're wanting to do some tile layouts and you've mm. got the tiling you can then measure out the size of the tile and get mm -hmm. the graphics of that tile to scale and then calculate how many tiles you're going to put on a wall which is you know great yes. for that quantifying Fantastic. yes um, so there you go, Belinda. You've got a lovely timber bench top on there. I, I, I don't think she'll like that. I think she. Looks I was going to say, were you happy with that colour? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So that that that's kind of an example of applying finishes. But um, I will just open up. If we so when you get the uh, SketchUp, you you open a, a template, and the template is about your units of measure. So feet, meters, inches, or millimeters. So. Yeah. I use architectural millimetres, and here we have um, SketchUp have um, little figures when you open a template, and they're um, people who work at SketchUp. So here we have oh, that's cute, Samala. So hi, Samala, and bye, Samala. So it's really just to prove how easy it is. Um, you know, you've got your standard kind of. If anyone uses any kind of um, editing tool in um, like photos or anything, you might see similar kind of tools, a pencil tool, a razor tool, you know, drawing rectangles or shapes. Mm. So that, that kind of, so that kind of is, is quite an easy to read um, menu as it is. But if I just draw a rectangle, you can be as, as vague as you like. You can just do free form and click anywhere, or um, you can be as, as detailed as you like so the dimensions down here in the bottom right corner i can enter my room say of three meters three thousand millimeters by three thousand millimeters um and then from there i can simply do a little offset and i might want to do my walls offset of say 90 stud wall and then this little up push pull tool grab that and you go up and you tell Ooh. it I want to go up 2400 and there you are you're in you're in 3d already there's your walls you might want to 
um, make this uh, room. So I've got spinning wheels on my Mac. So bear with me for a second. There we go. You then may want to go, oh, well, I want that room to be four metres. So simply grab a wall, grab a move tool, and click on the end, and then pull that out as much as you want. Or in the bottom right, again, you can type in, say, an extra metre. And mm. then you've got a, an extended wall there. So it's really, you know, really quite easy to use. And then you just add layers and details on top of that. So the other thing about SketchUp is it works on this idea of groups and components. So I'll just demonstrate the components. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's my room. I'm going to make that a component. I'm going to call that a bedroom. Create. And then that I'm going to copy pretty easily. Make another one and make a third one. And then you go, oh, you know, I, actually, I, I forgot to put a door in. So I'm going to put a door in here. Just draw another little rectangle and I'm going to pop it in somewhere there. But I'm going to tell it I want it to be 900 by 2100. And you'll notice that the others updated it as well. Mm -hmm. So this then, you then kind of, um, designing by um, replica. So you've got three identical rooms. You then may we want to make one a bit more unique. So you go, oh, make that unique. And that's mm -hmm. going to be bedroom number one. Um, this one and this one may be exactly the same, so we'll leave them the same. And then this guy, you can then start playing around and make that a different size. Oh, I've got something extra there. So I'll just go back here, grab that there. And we'll go this way, another metre. And you so see how you unique. can spend hours just having so, a play with all the features. Yeah, having a play. <laughs> you go, right, there's, there's our, you could even, it just becomes, you know, the ability to copy and group mm. and replicate is is just makes it so simple so here i'm going to rotate these around but Ooh. if by pressing one key on my keyboard option key i can replicate that again and then all of a sudden you know i'll, wow. I'll line that down here very easily with, with with my room on the other side and suddenly i've got my, my corridor there's my and i'll just you know fill that in with a rectangle and there's my, my corridor. Then if you, you'd want to do your um, exterior wall, it's just basically, you know, another kind of, this, this is, forgive my um, uh, um, very crudeness, but that's just, you know, external mm -hmm. wall making. And then you can offset that to a, a wall thickness, say you've got a 210, got some bricks or mortar or something, you can bring that up. And so, Chris, if you're you're wall. doing a renovation, mm. um, and yep. you've got an existing floor plan, do you um, and say it's you know it's 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 uh, the, the house is young enough to have a a floor plan and plans are ready, mm. do you have to yes. recreate that whole floor plan before you renovate, like do the inside, or can you export um, a design? No, previous? you could you could import um, a JPEG, you can import a PDF. Um, mm. So if you've got, if you've got, um, if you've bought um, a, a project plan or, or actually, <laughs> I don't condone this, but if you, if you maybe have a, a project home plan that you quite like, <laughs> Um, and you have a, a digital da, copy, da, da, you can da. import that, <laughs> and, <laughs> and you can then simply create. So this is, you know, obviously if you were from, from scratch, but mm. if you do in, import a plan, you can then simply trace over the walls um, and extrude them up and off you go um, mm, okay. and then just trace over the plan. So that, that that's um, – I did my brother's um, – 
uh, extension that way, um, which was a, a metric on home, single story. It was built. I lived in it for X amount of years and then I decided to put a second story on top. So mm. um, I took the metric on home plans, brought them in, traced over it, drew up the existing house. And then from there, we, we added on the, the top floor exactly how they wanted it. They took that to a builder um, and he had they had in-house drafting team. They, they did all the drafting, um, changed and tweaked a few things, but basically they handed him um, exactly what they wanted. Yes. And there was no misunderstanding of, of what they wanted and and they delivered them a, a second story. Um, yeah, so so it, it, that's not a problem at all. Um, mm. I, I teach for uh, the the course with, with Rare, through Rare. I teach um, the method of... Um, uh, sorry, calculating your or site measuring your room uh, uh, sizes, putting it into a table and then drawing it from scratch mm. um, because that gives you a really accurate um, uh, uh, dimension. Uh, when you import a plan, there, it's going to be slightly out by a few millimetres because you do have to scale that uh, drawing um, unless you get a, a, an exported drawing file, say from an architect, um, but like if you're already got an arch, a DWG or DXF, mm. yes, mm. they can bring that in, and that would be perfect. So that's what I've actually done with Belinda's house. Um, that that is a, a DWG from from the architect. Fantastic. So, yeah, it's 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 um yeah, very easy to use. Um, if you want to do some facade options, you know, you could, it's um, very easy to do that. You, you don't even have to build the whole house. You can just build the front of the house um, and then, you know, build, say, some some massing um, objects. Um, perhaps you maybe want a, a bit of a mass mm. going out here. Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of playing. You can really – it's great for just kind of playing around maybe – Maybe you want a, an overhang entry here. So you kind of segment that mass and then extend yeah, it out right. here. And then mm. maybe you or draw entries here. Maybe this then becomes a, I'm, I'm kind of, excuse the crudeness, but maybe mm. that's you know, a bit of a, a garage in there. Then here's your your entries in here. Um, so that that's kind of. It, 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 when you kind of do that free form, just yeah. for idea generating, it's it's fantastic for that because you, you know you can do that and then get more detailed and break it down and and get your measurements right and all that kind of thing. So um, fantastic. Yeah. I should have just said, oh, maybe Chris, you could show us how an extension and the pool might look like. We happen to have this property here as an example, but I can see how quickly you've been able to put that together. Obviously, from years and years of experience using using SketchUp. Uh, mm. But anyone that's 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 listening in, and you're if you're wanting to visualize what an extension might look like, or a renovation, or your project, um, I think this is a great first step to be able to explore very options before you even sit down with an architect or a builder, so that you have in your mind what might be possible. Um, and as you can mm. see, like Chris, like even just speaking with you, and you're already pulling things together is it because you've got the experience of being able to do this um but for those who uh, have a bit of time in lockdown <laughs> and want to pick up a new skill um what are yes. the ways for them to be able to learn because i you know like you mentioned a few times that you've got a course can you share a little bit about that with us please absolutely i'd love to so uh so through um renovation sorry <laughs> Through rare renovating real estate, <laughs> I'm just going to kill me. <laughs> um, not saying that properly, but um, through uh, renovating real estate, um, Belinda uh, has a renovation course, and she offers a uh, uh, part of that course is is the six modules in learning SketchUp. Uh, the course is also available independently of of the renovation course. Um, and it's, it's six modules. Uh, I also do every Monday night a tutorial Q&A 
uh, for an hour. So every Monday night you get that added support if you've got any any questions, any problems. Um, and then uh, full-time, there's a Facebook page where you can post any questions you're having. I check the Facebook page every day so, and, and answer your questions. Um, so lots of support there. I think um, the, the, the feedback we, we get and, and the reason why people are, are choosing this course is, is that um, there is that added support. Um, and also uh, uh, the, the course modules themselves, the videos, um, I, I present them in a very easy to follow manner, uh, which was one of the main reasons why we did this course. Belinda came to me and said, I love what, what you do. Would you be interested in doing a, a, a online course for me as part of my, my uh, renovation course? And I was like, wow, okay, yeah, sure, we'll, we'll, let's do this. Um, and th the reason was, she said, is that people have tried other um, courses and they've been lost in um, not being able to follow it, the videos are too quick and whatever have you. So, so I really break it down. It's very methodical and um, you'll be sketching up in no time. So um, uh, if people want to find this course, um, it's both, you can find it through either my website or through Belinda's website. Um, the easiest way to get there would be to go to um, my, my Instagram or my website, which is renosketch.com.au. And I've got a, a page there which um, has a link to the course at Rare. And um, or if you want to go to, to rare.com.au, I think that's right for Linda. <laughs> And um, but we're both on um, members in the group, um, so you can find us on the Facebook uh, pages as well. Um, uh, or you can even just join the the Facebook page. The school, the course is called SketchUp Made Easy. Um, that kind of says it all, really. We make it easy. <laughs> Fantastic. No, I love. I've loved what I've seen here. Um, I'm going to be like I said, I'm going to have a bit of a play with the with the free version, renovate and real estate.com.au. Chris, you're going to be in trouble tonight. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hit my, hit my phone. Actually. I think... <laughs> you did this. Um, but we've got it there. Thanks. Thanks, Belinda. No, Chris, that was, that was fantastic. Thank you for sharing that and, and giving us a, a live demo of how you can actually use SketchUp no and, and how easy it is. Uh, like you said, it's intuitive. Probably um, if you're wanting to save a little bit of time and you need drawings done, probably not the best time to, to try to work it out yourself right at this moment, but maybe get someone like Chris to help you with that. And then when you've got a bit of time to play around with it, then do so. Do the course and educate yourself. He's not in Berlin, says publicly. Who knows what happens behind the scenes? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. And everyone that's, that's been um, with us and commented, uh, thank you for your support. I uh, appreciate you all being here. I hope you are all well. You're all safe and well. Um, that was fantastic. I, and thank you for, for being here. Um, we'd love to see you in the next episode of the Business of Property. Keep well, take care, and we'll see you all again. Thank you. Bye-bye.